I am three, no three. Welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoy this. Warning, don't try anything I do without taking proper precautions. Protect your skin, eyes, and lungs. So on my intro video, I said we would deconstruct this piece of brass chemically. And I said I would rewrite the reactivity series. So there it is. Slow down, three. You're going awfully fast. How do you know that golden chicken looking thing is brass? And what is brass anyway? Yellow brass is a common alloy of copper and zinc. It's usually between 60 to 80% copper and the balance is zinc. Because of the properties of brass, it's used often in plumbing and things like the spray nozzle. That golden chicken looking thing was once a spray nozzle, but it quit working. So I changed that. Now it's a golden chicken looking thing. The melting point of brass is around 900 degrees Celsius or 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. Use caution if you're melting brass or zinc. Zinc oxide fumes become airborne at just over 900 degrees Celsius. So it looks like the chicken weighs about 37 grams. The more accurate scale says 37.45. Three, you said you were going to talk about money. How much is the chicken worth? Why don't we just sell the thing and be rich and forget about all this work and chemistry and stuff? If it was real gold, it would be worth over $2,000. But it's not real gold. Right now, yellow brass is selling for $1.80 a pound. And that means for a kilogram, it's about $4. So that means our beloved chicken is worth about 15 cents. Four dollars divided by a thousand grams times 37. Well, you get the idea. Separating the brass mechanically first would make it a lot easier to dissolve in acid. First I tried a file, and then my rotary tool with a tungsten carbide bit. The file was really slow, and the tungsten carbide bit was really messy. So I decided to try a hacksaw. The hacksaw cut okay, but it was starting to dull out the blade. Then I flipped my metal tray over and lost all the dust that I was collecting. Then I decided to try my rotary tool with a diamond cutter bit and a bath of water. This seemed to work okay, it made a lot of cuts, I was saving the dust, but the water was getting everywhere, and eventually all the diamonds wore off the cutting edge and it just wouldn't cut. So this is all of the dust that I collected and a couple little bits from the diamond cutting part. I'm going to dump them into this beaker here. Try and get all of them out. Okay, that looks like that should be about good. So I let them settle for a while. Then after they settled, I try to decant off the liquid and save all the bits in the bottom, pour the water off, and then we're left with just the brass powder in the bottom. That's what we got there, so we decided to dry it out. We put it on the super scientific hot plate here, turn it up to where it would just barely turn on. You can see the steam coming off there. And then we're going to try to take it off now that it stopped steaming. Give it a little tap on the side to make sure it's not too hot. And look at that, we have dust. So then we're going to weigh the dust. And we have 4.016 grams. And the other pieces weigh 28.276 grams. So this is the beaker that we use to dry the powder out. And for our solvent, we will use distilled white vinegar. We'll start with the 100 milliliters of vinegar. And here's our brass powder that we had. Now we're going to add just the powder first and not the big chunks yet because we want to see what happens. There goes the vinegar. And we'll give it just a little swirl here. So why did I choose distilled white vinegar instead of all the other acid solvents that are available? 
Food grade distilled white vinegar is 5% acetic acid, CH3, COOH, or C2H4O2. The other 95% is usually distilled water. I do know that both copper and zinc dissolve in acetic acid, and I wanted the copper to dissolve because of the pretty blue color. The zinc usually turns out just clear. Nitric acid or HNO3 would have been a great choice because it dissolves both copper and zinc. You still get the pretty blue color. It would have been a lot faster, but it's expensive and the fumes are very hazardous. Both hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid would have been decent choices, except they would only dissolve the zinc and not the copper, so no pretty blue color. They're also more expensive and also have really intense fumes. I'm working on a better understanding of acetic acid because it's safer to work with and it's a lot cheaper. I want to know how it acts with different metals so that I can use it for other things. I did decide to add hydrogen peroxide because of its powerful oxidizing boost. This is just normal 3% hydrogen peroxide that you can buy at almost any store. Watch what happens though when we add just 20 milliliters to this solution that we've started. Give it another swirl here. Notice how the color is already changing and the little bits of brass are starting to not float anymore. Some people will say that if you combine the two, you make paracetic acid. It kind of makes sense, peroxide, acetic acid, mixed together, but it really doesn't matter what you call it, it's dissolving the brass. So from this point on, I will be wearing nitrile clothes as long as I can remember, and I will be wearing my cloth mask with the N95 liner in the middle for my protection and to set a good example for anybody watching. Well, there's the blue color that I was looking for. Maybe we should get this thing on the hot plate. And we'll add 30 more milliliters of hydrogen peroxide also. There's still some undissolved particles in the bottom of this thing. So hopefully the heat will help them get dissolved faster. So at first we'll start with a really low heat. And here you see a whole bunch of little bubbles. The little bubbles are hydrogen bubbles. That means things are getting dissolved into your solution. The larger bubbles are oxygen, or since there's carbon and acetic acid, it's probably carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. Hydrogen gas is very flammable, almost explosive, but it's also a lot less dense than the air around us. So it rises really fast and we're outside. Also, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide are not good things for you to breathe, but again, we're outside. There's still a lot of undissolved particles in there. At this point, something strange started happening. I was noticing it looked like precipitating out was a whitish or grayish precipitate. And I was almost thinking that maybe it's silver. I've seen silver precipitate out of an acetate solution before. So it is possible. And if it was precipitating out, it's not like we're going to get a few grams out of 37 grams of brass. It wouldn't surprise me to find a fraction of a gram, and it would look like a lot more than it was. 
so at this point we're going to switch beakers we're going to go to the thousand milliliter beaker and we are going to add in those larger pieces that we had in the beginning because all we have in there so far is the powder and just so you know this was allowed to cool thermal shock a change in temperature can shatter your lab glass so be careful that's also another reason why I'm doing this as low to the ground as possible because breaking glass is probably one of the most dangerous things about this and because it's not a precious metal solution I don't have anything to catch the solution underneath but you could cut yourself and you could get a hot acidic solution on you and now we're gonna add another hundred milliliters of our 5% acetic acid and we'll add another 40 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide and we'll turn on some heat so you can see some smaller bubbles here and some larger bubbles this whole time we've been running on low heat The sediment is really strange. I can't tell if it's undissolved material or precipitate. It does not look like copper precipitating out. So now we'll switch it up a little bit and transfer this liquid into a smaller beaker. Memorial Day week. Special thanks to the United States Navy for the airplane sound effects. So you can see the larger chunks of undissolved material, and there is some sediment in there. So we're going to set the smaller beaker of liquid aside for a moment and add some fresh vinegar and hydrogen peroxide. So this will be 200 milliliters of the vinegar and about 50 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide we're adding to the undissolved it will turn on some heat I keep saying I think there might be silver in here but looking at the undissolved pieces it looks like it has a black plating on it that could be from silver Now the pieces look strangely copper plated. So here I'm adding back in the part of the solution that we set aside in the smaller beaker. And then we're going to add another 200 milliliters of vinegar. And we're adding another 60 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. Now that we have so much liquid, we're going to crank the heat up a little bit. After being at higher temperature for a little while, you can see that we're back to a nice bright blue color. And you can see a little bit of activity at the top. I increased the temperature 
and brought it up to a rolling boil to try to reduce the solution. Now that I have it about where I want it, I'm going to try to pour this liquid over hot. I'm going to try to get all of the precipitant in the liquid into the other beaker. So I'm going to temper the glass by pouring it in a little bit at a time. And hopefully that will keep the thermal shock from happening too quickly and keep my other beaker from cracking. So I want to get the precipitate out of the main beaker with the liquid into the other beaker. Well, it looks like it's not going to crack, so that's a good thing. So I'm going to let the liquid settle. I'm going to put the liquid back on the hot plate to finish cooling off. And I'm going to transfer the other beaker with the pieces left in it into the plastic dish. And then thermal shock can also crack your beaker going the other way. So we're going to temper the glass with some cool water since the beaker is still warm. And this is distilled water we're pouring over it. I just want to rinse the big undissolved pieces off so I can pull them out. And whatever sediment is left, I can put with the other sediment. It's kind of hard to see here, but there is some sediment falling out of this liquid solution. So we got 27.96 of big solid pieces left. We'll put the solid pieces back in the beaker and we'll add 300 milliliters of vinegar this time. And we'll add another 100 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. And we'll crank the heat all the way up. Okay, at this point in the day, it's getting kind of late, so I'm going to take all of the liquid that we have and combine it together and try to reduce it for storage for the night. Okay, so on the hot plate cooling, we have our blue solution with the undissolved chunks and the sediment on the bottom. In the big beaker, we have some distilled water that we're going to pour the solution into because it's still a little bit hot. And in the little beaker, we also have some distilled water that we're going to try to cool the chunks off in 
and we're going to try to keep the sediment separate to store for the night. So here's what we have left of the big pieces. I threw them on the scale, and although it's hard to read there, it says 27.716 grams. The chicken brass starting weight was 37.45 grams. We lost 5.158 in an accident, so we had 32.292 grams to dissolve. So at the end of the day here, the undissolved pieces weigh 27.716 grams. So that means there's 4.576 grams either in the solution, in the sediment, or otherwise lost. Wait, three, did you miss me? Okay, well, why don't you just cut this video here, and then you can do a follow-up after. It's getting kind of long. It's already been over 20 minutes. You're doing pretty good. You've got stuff for the next one, so you can get it out quick. Look out for part two, because this is the end.